So I had a request to do a video about timers in highs. Uh, this was requested by Dan on the highs forum. I've covered timers a little bit in other videos. Uh, if you check out the scripting 101 video in the callback section of that video, I, I did a little bit about timers. But I thought over the next few videos, uh, we'll have a look at the different aspects of timers and a few things you can do with them. There are three types of timers in highs. Today we're going to look at the timer object. And what we're going to do is we're going to build this little timer app that I've put together. So we hit start and it starts counting up. We can control the speed using this knob here. And this is a percentage. If we turn it all the way up, it's a one second delay. And we can turn it down to increase the speed. And we should probably flip the way that works because at the moment a lower speed is faster and a higher speed is uh, slower. So maybe we'll flip that around. And then we can press the stop button and it acts like a pause and we can hit start again. And it'll carry on from where it was. Or we can hit reset and it goes back to zero. It's a simple little program, but it demonstrates the timer object really well. So this is what we're going to build today. So we'll start off with a blank project. I'm going to add a label to this canvas here. I've already added the main interface script, but the rest of the script is uh, the rest of the project is empty. So we've just got the script here. We'll increase the font size. We'll make that 72. We'll change the font to oxygen and we'll just make that label a little larger. And we'll turn off the editable setting. Let's also rename this. We'll call it LBL count and we'll set the text to zero. Okay, next we need three buttons. So we've got our start button. I'm going to press Control D to duplicate that. That'll be our stop button. I'll press Control D again and that will be our reset button. So we'll just name those BTN start. BTN stop and BTN reset. Okay, all of these we want to highlight and we want to turn off save in preset. The start and stop button we want to select and we want to set the radio group to one so that only one of these can be active at a time and they'll automatically toggle because they're now in a radio group. And the reset button we want to set this to momentary so when we click that, it will just click off when we release the mouse. Okay, let's uh, change the text of these. We'll have start, stop, and reset. Okay, the last control we need is a slider or a knob. And we're going to call this KNB speed. The way I'm getting this pop up to appear, by the way, for renaming, if you don't know, I'm just selecting it, uh, selecting the control in the component list, and then I'm hitting F2 on my keyboard and it brings up this pop up. So we'll turn off save in preset and we'll change the text. So that just says speed. And we'll change the mode to normalized percentage. And uh, normalized percentage basically means the knob is going to have a value of between 0 and 1, with each increment being 0 0.01. But it will display a percentage between 0 and 100. So the values between 0 and 1, if we were to do knob get value, it, will, it would give us a value between 0 and 1. Uh, but the value we see is between 0 and 100. So this is a really handy way of uh, dealing with percentages for sliders. OK, now we'll start scripting. So first we'll get a reference to the label. Then we'll get a reference to our start and stop buttons. And the same for our reset button. And one last one for our speed knob. 
So all we've done so far is we've just got a reference to each control and put it inside a, a variable. So let's talk about timers. So we've got three types of timers in highs. We've got timer objects, we've got the synth timer callback, and we've got panel timers. In today's video, we're going to be dealing just with the timer object. We'll look at the other two in separate videos. So we're going to create a timer object. So I'll put a comment there. And to create a timer object, we declare a variable. We're going to call it T. You can call it timer, you can call it something else. We'll call it T. And it's going to be equal to engine dot create timer object. So highs doesn't have a wait function or a sleep function that you might have seen in other languages that allow you to delay the, the progression of the program. Uh, so whenever you need to do something that needs to happen outside of the flow of the program, rather than stopping the program flow, you can use a timer and that kind of makes uh, the task asynchronous. And to add something to a timer, to tell the timer what you want it to do, we use a timer callback function. So we have a timer object and we're going to write t.setTimerCallback and we're going to pass a function into here. And now we've assigned this function to our timer object t. So anything that we put in here, like console.print hello world, this will happen whenever our timer is active. And we activate our timer really simply with the function start timer. And inside these parentheses, we have to give it a value, which is the delay in milliseconds that we want our timer to have. So if we want this callback function to happen every second, we'd put a value of 1000 in here. And then I'm going to hit F5 and there'll be a one second delay because that's the length of our timer. And then we'll see it start printing hello world to the console every second. So there we go. So all that's happening is in the background, this timer is running and every second it's calling this function and it's doing whatever we've put in the function. In this case, just printing out hello world. So we'll just comment that out for now. I just commented that out so I could re recompile and it would stop the timer and now we're no longer seeing the text in the console. So let's say we were to put a delay of 10 milliseconds in here and I'll hit F5. You can see we get this error message that says go easy on the timer. So there is a minimum delay or a maximum speed, however you want to look at it, that the timer can run at. I think it's actually 11 milliseconds. Let me just hit F5 and see if that's right. Yeah, so 11 milliseconds is the fastest speed of the timer, which is plenty fast for almost anything you'll want to do. So because the timer can only run as fast as 11 milliseconds, we don't want our speed knob to go all the way to 0% because that's going to be too quick for the timer. We're going to get an error. So we need to decide on a minimum value for this uh, speed knob. So I want the speed knob to go up to one second, so a thousand milliseconds. So what we need to do is we need to find out what percentage of a thousand 11 is. And I'll show you the calculation for that. If you want to know what the percentage of one number is from another, you can say what is 11% or what percentage should I say is 11 of 1000. And that's the calculation to work that out. So it's 1.1. So 1.1% of a thousand is 11. So we're going to set our timer to have a minimum uh, value of 1.1%. So in the min here, we're going to put 0.11. Nope, no, I should have had another naught in that. 0.011. Okay, so it, it doesn't have that um, resolution, it seems. So the minimum we can have is 1%. Uh, so that might be a bit fast. So let's set it to 0.02. So 2%. So that means our timer uh, will never go too low that it's uh, going to give us that error about going easy on the timer. 
Okay, so the next thing we want to do, now we've got this function, start timer, we want to call this function when we hit the start button. So we're going to add a callback to our btn start uh, button here, btn start dot set control callback. And we'll add a function on btn start control. So in here, we're going to check if the value of the button is one. So has the button been pressed? So if value, we can put equals one, but we don't need to. We can just put if value. And then we want to do t.startTimer. And we need to put a value in here. So the value we want to put in here is a thousand, because I said I want the speed to have a maximum delay of a second, so it's a thousand milliseconds. And we times that by the knob value, so can be speed, can be speed dot get value. And this works because, uh, well, I'll show you, if we have a thousand and we times it by, let's say our knobs value is 0 0.5, so that would mean it's at 50%, right? But it's going to return the value 0 0.5. So if we times by 0 0.5, that gives us 500, which is 50% of 1,000. So that's why this calculation works, because this is a normalized percentage, and it's just displayed as a full percentage there. It means that what we're actually doing here, when this is a 50%, would be doing 1,000 times 0 0.5. That's our start button. So if we compile now, we've commented out this one here. In fact, let's just delete that. We don't want it to start on in it, so we can delete that. And we'll hit the start button. And our time will start running, says hello world. So that's our start button. Now let's do our stop button. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to add a callback to our stop button. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to say if value. So this is only going to happen when this button is turned on, not when it's turned off if value, and this time we want to stop the timer rather than start it. And the command to stop the timer is t dot stop timer. And that's it. So now if I hit the start button, we're going to see hello world printing out. And if I hit the stop button, it's going to stop and then I can hit start again and it'll restart. And I can hit stop and it stops. Okay, now let's get our counter actually increasing and displaying. So we're going to need a variable. We'll call it count, and it's going to start off as zero. And our label here is going to default to having the value of count. So we'll do set text is equal to count. So if, if we set count up here to 50, then when we hit F5, our label on the screen is going to have the text set 50. We're going to have it default to zero though. So we'll start at zero like that. Then in our timer callback, all we want to do is increase the value of our count variable and set the labels text. So to increase the value, we can do, there's two ways we can do it. We can write count equals count plus one. So that will take whatever the current value of count is and add one to it. Or we can do the same thing, but in a shorthand, which is just to write count plus plus. And that does the same thing. It just says, take the current value of count and add one to it. And then we want to set the text of the label to count, just like we've done down here. Okay, so now if I hit start, we'll see this number increase. Now, currently our speed knob makes no difference because we haven't written a callback for this knob. So the speed knob is only effective at the moment when we first press start. But it doesn't change the speed in between. Before we implement this last part of the speed knob uh, functionality, let's implement the reset button. So again, we're going to have a callback here. And if you remember, we made this button momentary, so 
it's on when we click it and it's off when we release the mouse. So as we've done for the other two buttons, we'll have an if value here, just so we're only doing things when we actually click the button. And we're going to use curly braces with this if statement because we're going to have one, uh, we're going to have more than one statement within this uh, if statement. For these ones, we only have one statement for each one, so we don't need the curly braces, but here we're going to have more than one. So when you hit the reset button, it's going to set count to zero. That's our variable up here. And it's going to set the label text to count again. So let's try that out. So we'll hit start. We'll hit stop. And then we'll hit reset and it should reset it. There we go. We can start again. Stop. Reset. And if you hit reset while it's running, it will just reset and it'll carry on counting because we're not going to stop the timer. Okay, now let's make it so that when we move the timer, uh, the speed knob, it adjusts the speed of the timer. This is something I've seen people request is how do you change the timer speed sort of in real time? And it's really simple. So let's do that. So we'll do KNB speed dot set control callback on KNB speed control. So to change the speed of the timer, even while it's running, all you have to do is call start timer again and just give it a different value and it will change the speed. So we'll say KNB uh, no, we won't. We'll say t dot start timer is one thousand times the value of the knob, which we're getting from here, and that's all there is to it. We'll add something else in here in just a moment because if I now move the speed knob, even though we're in the off position, it's going to start the timer, and that's because we're calling start timer here. So what we need to do is just add a check inside the speed knobs call back just to make sure that the start button has actually been pressed. So will say if btn start dot get value. So if the start button isn't pressed, it won't do anything. So I can move that and it's not doing anything now. But if I hit start, I can now move it and it will slow down or speed up the timer. Okay, now one last thing. Um, I said at the beginning of this, it'd be good if increasing the speed actually increased the speed or reduced the delay and reducing the speed increased the delay. So basically we need to flip our value around and the way we can do that is just to uh, write 1000 and then minus 1000 times value. And we'll do the same up here in the start button callback. So now a higher value is going to be faster. So if I have now set this to 100%, uh, but we're going to get a little problem, so I'm just going to pull it back a bit. We'll set it to 92% and I'll hit start. And it's nice and fast. And if I pull it back, it'll go slower. And all the way back, it'll be around about a second. But there's actually a problem with this because if I push it all the way up to 100% and hit start, we're going to get an error message. It's that one we had before, go easy on the timer. So what we've got to do now is reverse what we did before. We had it starting at uh, 2% and going up to 100. Now we need to have it going from 98% uh, or going from 0% up to 98%. So we'll just change this. So that will go from 0 to 0 0.98. I think that's right. So now when I hit start, we shouldn't get that error and all the way at the lowest value, it's now running at one second. Okay, that's the project complete. We've got a little timer running. Uh, it's nice and simple, but you can obviously expand this and whatever you want to happen at that interval, you can place inside this function. And whenever you want to stop the timer, you call stop timer. Whenever you want to start the timer or change the interval, you can call start timer. And you can have loads of these timer objects all running at the same time. You don't have to just have one. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't go crazy with it because depending on your CPU and um, the specs of your machine, it's going to 
alter the efficiency of the timers and how many times you can run and things like that. But I mean, having three or four timers going at the same time is probably not going to hurt anything. And another thing you can do, if you're doing animations or something like that with the timers, you could combine multiple animations into a single timer callback. So you don't have to have one timer per animation. You can have them all running in the same timer and that will uh, make things a little more efficient. Okay, that's about it for this video. If you're on Patreon, I'll be posting the snippet for this um, in uh, for the higher tier uh, patrons. And next month we'll follow up with another video about timers and we're going to look at a, a different method of using timers and a different application for them as well. If you've got any questions or comments, let me know below the video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.